Welcome, little scientists. It's Miss Gisa, and we're going to continue studying about bees. Make sure you listen till the end because I have an activity for you. The story we're going to read today is called Honey in a Hive, and it's written by Ann Rockwell and illustrated by S.D. Schindler. In spring and summer, this meadow is full of sweet smelling flowers. Listen, do you hear a buzzing sound? It comes from the rapidly beating wings of many busy bees. They are busy gathering nectar, the sweet liquid inside flowers to make into honey. They are gathering pollen, the yellow powder in a flower to feed their queen and all her young bees. Bees live in hives filled with honeycombs that they build with beeswax from their bodies. In every beehive, there are thousands of bees and one queen who is much bigger than any of the other bees. She doesn't gather nectar or pollen or do any work. Her job is to lay eggs that will become new bees. The queen bee leaves her home to fly high in the sky and mate with many male bees called drones. Drones don't do any work either. All they do is mate with the queen so she can lay thousands of eggs. As soon as they have mated with her, they die. Most bees that hatch inside a hive are worker bees because there is a lot of work to be done making honey and workers do all the work, not the drones, not the queen. All workers are female, but they don't mate or lay eggs. They gather food, guard and clean the hive, make honey and feed their queen and her newly hatched bees. The food bees eat is honey made from nectar. Some workers have the job of finding flowers with plenty of nectar. Flowers have ultraviolet markings on them that people can't see. These markings lead to the place inside the flower where the nectar is. Unlike humans, bees can see these ultraviolet markings. Isn't that so interesting? Bees smell with their antennae and pads on their feet. The smell tells them if the nectar will make good honey. When a worker finds a field full of flowers, she needs help in gathering nectar from it. She flies back to the hive and does a dance. The dance tells other worker bees where the flowers are. As soon as the worker has finished dancing, other worker bees fly out of the hive and follow her to the flowers. It takes a lot of nectar to make a little bit of honey. The bees can't carry much nectar or pollen. They must make many journeys from the hive to the flowers and back again. After a worker bee has made about 400 long flights, the muscles in her wings and legs are worn out. She usually falls to the ground and dies of exhaustion. When a worker bee brings nectar to the hive, she puts it in a hexagonal or six-sided chamber made out of thin wax. These chambers are called cells. Then she flies off to get more nectar while other workers get busy turning the nectar into honey. Bees fan the nectar with their wings. This dries the watery nectar so that it becomes thick and sticky. It becomes honey. Honey's thickness and natural plant chemicals keep germs from growing in the honey. It can be stored in the honeycomb chambers for a long time, sometimes for years. When a wax chamber is full of honey, the worker seals it up and begins to make a new one. Each cell is exactly the same size and same shape as the others. More nectar is brought and more honey is made. More thin walled wax cells are filled. The honeycombs grow bigger and bigger. When it is time for a swarm, worker bees build special queen cells at the bottom of the honeycomb. The queen lays eggs in these cells. The workers make a special food out of pollen and chemicals from their bodies. This is royal jelly, a food that only young queen bees eat. Workers feed the royal jelly to the new bees in the queen cells. The rich food makes these bees become queen bees. The old queen must then leave and rule a new hive where she can lay the many eggs still inside her. But she is too heavy to fly, so the worker bees stop feeding her. On the day she's thin enough to fly, thousands of workers and drones fly away with the old queen. This flight is called a swarm. The swarming bees find a place to build a new hive. They make new six-sided cells of wax. Back in the old hive, the new queens fight. The strongest of them kills the others. 
until only she is left. Who will feed her now? Most of the workers and drones flew off with the old queen, so the new queen must mate right away and lay more eggs. She flies up into the sky for her mating flight, where drones wait for her. She mates in the sky with many drones for about two hours. Then she returns to the hive and lays eggs. Soon new bees fill the hive. New workers search for nectar and bring it back to the hive. More honey is made. Not only bees love honey, people do too. Some people gather wild honey and some build beehives. For many thousands of years, people all over the world have observed bees and tried to learn all they can about them to get the honey bees make. Do you love to spread honey on your breakfast toast? Have you ever eaten honey in the honeycomb? Try it sometimes. It is delicious combined with its chewy wax. Take a good look at the honeycomb before it's all gone. You will see how well bees build their honeycombs with thin wax. Look at the label on a jar of honey. It will usually tell you what kind of flowers the honey came from. Most of the honey we buy comes from clover, but some come from wildflowers and some from orange blossoms. Every kind of flower has nectar and bees gather it wherever they find it. And every drop of honey tastes just as sweet as a flower smells. In the back, there are more facts about bees and honey. Now, let's go do an art project. All right, little scientists and artists, are you ready to do an art project with me? Okay, now that we've learned more about bees and making honey, let's make a little art design. Um, and what you'll need is a roll of toilet paper or two, depending on how many cells you want to make in your hive, some cotton balls, you can use um, cellophane paper or I've got tissue paper, yellow tissue paper. Um, I've got my little bee here, but you can also use the little rock bee that you made. Uh, if you haven't seen that episode, you can make your own little rock bee. Be sure to look that up on our YouTube channel. And then you need some colored pencils or crayons. And I actually have real bee pollen, uh, but if you like, you can use sunflower seeds or something else to be the pollen. So the first step is to cut up your paper towel roll or toilet paper roll. All right, then you can fill some of the cells with the royal jelly. You can fill some of the cells with the pollen. And remember, I'm using sunflower seeds, you can use lentils, you can use real pollen, whatever, whatever you have around the house. And then you can fill some of the cells with honey. And like I said, I'm using t yellow tissue paper, but you can also use if you've got yellow cellophane paper, that works well too. And you can draw, put our little bee here, you can draw some flowers. If you'd like, you can put some of the little pollen in the middle of the flower. You can draw some bees or put some bees around, buzzing around to get that pollen, then they bring it back to the hive, right? Uh, to make the honey. So you can also label pollen, royal jelly, honey and then we've got the pollen here that the bee collects right and the bee also collects nectar 
from flowers, right? And then brings it back to the hive. And that's how a bee makes honey. Remember to send me your artwork. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to like and subscribe to support our channel.